No, but here we are at Tony's shop. I love this. We're yeah, we're in his workshop right now. So Sunday early morning, and uh, we know Tony doesn't want to sing anything. So I'm not going to. Okay. <laughs> so, so that means Carlito. So I want to like I want to say two things before we start. I said to uh, Manny here. I said I feel like we're going hunting. <laughs> Uh, welcome to paradise <laughs> hunting <laughs> you as you guys will know is you know basically tony's american basically right? yeah. Wait, yeah hold on hold on <laughs> you're singing man i know no no i'm leading up to something right now so <laughs> he's gonna and, sing the national so anthem. here i go <laughs> <laughs> oh canada <laughs> don't change <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're off to the races. We have Tony. How do you pronounce your last name? Fogarty. And Fogartis. You're all, for and and you're known as the Timber Taylor. Timber Taylor the as our only. special guests on an early morning, and we are in Tony's shop. That it took us a little while to just absorb everything. How impressed well, we, we were. Did, we did a tour. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, it's we great. went sledding down the hill, <laughs> <laughs> chased some coyotes, <laughs> no, got we off didn't our do any of neighbors. That. We played with the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> we are chilling out in his garage. And so, Tony, let's uh, let's go back to the beginning, man. Let's start mm. from the beginning. Introduce yourself. Tell us a lot about yourself and where you came from and how you got into this business. And I guess how you got to meet us. My name is Tony. Oh, I guess we've already been over that. Um, <laughs> how I got in the business. Let's see. So I moved here from Texas about eight years ago because my wife is Canadian. What part of Texas? In between Austin and San Antonio. Got Blanco, it. Texas. Got Paradise. It. Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, as previously mentioned, my wife is Canadian, so we decided to move here where it is cold nine months out of the year. But other than that... <laughs> Canada is awesome. I have no regrets. Nine it's very nice months here. of the year? <laughs> easily, easily. Between freezes, it's nine months. Have you Absolutely. finished the trim on your igloo yet or what? No. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps coming down. <laughs> there is no adhesive for that one, huh? Okay, okay so well, we're up in Canada now. Wife's Canadian, you're American. This is a nice mix. Before moving here, I wasn't in the trades at all. I only got into the trades when I moved here. Started... Working with a buddy who was already here when I moved here, and he was working for a contractor in Toronto. So when I showed up, no skills whatsoever, didn't even know what drywall was because I was previously a musician. So literally had zero experience, kind of had to just get into it. Boys liked making stuff, so I got into, I liked the artistry side of the woodworking stuff, furniture, kind of more custom pieces, and of course, starting with all the hacky pallet wood garbage that's more than likely in a landfill right now or burned in my <laughs> beautiful wood stove As, presented all, over where, here. Where it should be. Yeah. <laughs> It so, smells beautiful in here, everyone. <laughs> it truly does. Apparently, he brushed his teeth. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Just to give everybody an idea, By we're, the way, we're pretty I much did. about five feet away from each other. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so we're all good. Uh, so yeah, and then I just kind of been getting more and more into it over time. Stopped playing music altogether because it realized it's just not for me anymore. Writing um, songs and stuff. No, uh, just uh, I was a bass player, so uh, I did uh, session work, played in several bands, and then, but it's just like, we do a lot of shows in Austin, and that's kind of the focus there, there's a lot, like it's the live music capital of the world, so that's kind of the thing to do, but then when I moved here, kind of a harsh reality that I wasn't really going to make any money playing bass, I had to get serious, get a real job, that's kind of how I got into it, and then I started really liking it, and so... And that's basically it. So you just fell into construction. Yeah. And then as I started doing it more, getting more into it, then, yeah, I just started really liking it. Now, like, do the mostly trim stuff, a couple of custom pieces, some built-ins, some cabinetry here and there, kind of smaller things. I wouldn't take on a whole kitchen, but little built-ins, mostly on-site trim. And how which, long you been doing this now, the, the actual 
carpentry side of things? Uh, six years. Or so? That's it. Huh? Yeah. Six years. Five, five or six years. Yeah. How much younger are you than us? So I'm thirty. Mm-hmm. And listen, listen. 32. You're thirty-two. He's thirty-two. He can almost be your son, Carlito. Ah, almost. That be great. <laughs> almost. <laughs> <laughs> There's a family photo I, from a Christmas card. I didn't card. start that early. Carlito, get rid of me. Unhold my hand. <laughs> that would have been a little bit creepy Walk me if to I started the that early. <laughs> <laughs> okay, son. <laughs> Back on track. Six years and just kind of just got right into it. I met you through our friend Barry. Right. Okay, so yeah, that's the next step. So for that contractor that I was working for, Barry Hopkins. Barry Hopkins, the electrician, had just moved here from Ireland the same time that I moved here from Texas. We were both working for this guy who was just a absolute terror. That's a he whole other yeah. story that so involves the police. The, and yeah, <laughs> no, just a piece of human debris. Yes. Absolute yes. awful human being. Human so, debris. <laughs> so uh, this guy, like, he wouldn't let anybody do anything. And if you did do anything, like any sort of actual work, he'd yell at you if it wasn't absolutely perfect. So in my case, because I knew nothing, it made sense. You know, I probably deserved it. Barry, who is an electrician, Barry was like, digging holes and filling buckets with Ouch. me. Poor guy. Was just so miserable. Ouch. And then we were both working together. And then we split off, started doing other things, doing our own jobs, getting a little more working with other other people. I started honing my skill a bit more. Barry already obviously was an electrician, so he was good. And then I guess Barry started working with you, Manny, yep. and then I guess at some point introduced me. And then I did a job, uh, that one job there for you. So. Yep. And that's yeah. how we got, and that's how you met Carlito. The rest is history, dude. That and was... I, I, I just want to apologize for introducing you to Carlito. <laughs> you know that's what? All. Honestly, uh, I am so impressed with you, man. Nah, wow, you. when I saw your skills, <laughs> you know, I was pretty stoked in the first place. I, I got an opportunity to uh, work at Manny's. He was trying to convince us to come down there and and you know spend some time with him, get him, <clears throat> get to know him. When I showed up there, I could not believe your tools uh, your setup too your kind. attitude <laughs> and that's coming from a guy that's got 30 years experience and 15 well, crappy and, years and on tv wa- show this is what i want to lead to <laughs> and that's your opinion um <laughs> it is my opinion and it, i think it's valid uh, okay well we both have different opinions <laughs> <laughs> but what i want to lead to is you know you're right i've been in this industry for 30 years you've heard me complain a lot about people just not learning Never. or getting it together and I'm very impressed that there are people like yourself that are just naturally born with talent to be a finished carpenter. Eh, and, I would... and, and I consider you a... <laughs> I'd like to hear what Tony was no, going to finish there with. But what I think you really are is a furniture maker because you take baseboards, casings, and doors and turn it into furniture to me. Oh, thank you. Like, honestly, like I was it's so impressive. So usually I have people watching me like mud or do something and like they, I can see people enjoying watching me work. And, you know, you make when you do something for so long, you typically, you know, amaze people. I was unbelievably amazed at your <laughs> techniques and tools. Ah, thank you. He, he couldn't stop talking about <laughs> You're the like setup, MacGyver. Uh, the, the containers, the way it was all <laughs> being done, and he was like, I've been in this business so but, long. But Tony, you've <laughs> never re- seen you've it this reinvented way. reinvented every tool. Uh, no. Every tool. And there's a jig for Anything that you do. Ah, uh, jig life. Like, you could buy a pencil and you'll make a jig and you'll hey, make that pencil that's a, better. That's a song there, Carlito, the jig life. Wait a second. Maybe we should have started with the song. <laughs> no, I don't want to watch Deliverance. I'm fine with watching it, okay? I've seen it a couple of times. Uh, I don't need to see it yet. No. <laughs> anyway, so how did you problem solve this is what was impressive to me when we got talking is like whenever i would give you a task and i would just ask you to do something you would problem solve it to the to the max the right I, attitude yeah i would turn around and i'm like holy fuck that's great that's wonderful that's <laughs> wonderful. Mm. can you stay you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> comes from uh wanting to stay employed i guess <laughs> the problem solving yeah, yeah. no uh, i don't know i guess it's yeah maybe just the attitude uh, trying to figure out how you can 
best make things work with what you have because basically in construction especially with remodeling like you're given crappy old house and you're supposed to try and make it nice so obviously nothing's going to be perfect you go in the stringer doesn't line up with the wall so you got to shim things out or in or whatever and there's nothing's ever perfect so basically if you go in with the attitude that it's not going to be perfect you have to make it work these are the tools you were given and you somehow need to make it function properly, then uh, if you keep that attitude in mind, I guess, like, it's not like I came up with this concept. No, no. It's it's just like, yeah, it's... uh, You've added to the concept. I want to ask you a Canadian-American question. Let's have it. (laughs) No, no, no. Why is it that Americans call our business remodeling and Canadians call our business renovating? Ooh. Where does that come from? I notice every time I'm in the States... I have no idea. Every time I'm in the States, they always speak to me remodel every time i'm in canada speak, people speak to me renovating but then again there's parts in the states that everyone thinks it's hardcore renos <laughs> <laughs> i still don't understand uh, that one but reno. reno nevada i yeah, get it but maybe, uh, so maybe those are the gamblers that are asking you the questions maybe maybe <laughs> but okay yeah so and i totally agree with you about the problem solving like how to, the attitude is different and i i like that Everybody, when you were on site, that a lot of, you know, the painter and the tiler, they were paying attention to what you were doing, but you were also paying attention to what they were doing. You didn't want to do what they were doing, but you wanted to stay doing what you were doing. I like that kind of family, you know, dynamic that the trades are all working together. I don't like trades that are separated and they have right, their blinders yeah. on and come in and I don't care about you. You do your job and I don't care about you and I'll do my job and I don't care about you. That's right. not you. That's not how you work. That's not how it is. Let's give out your handle right now, right off the bat, so people have it, social media wise at the timber taylor on instagram have facebook but too many uh obnoxious people sending me forwarding things that i'm supposed to (laughs) forward on to other people and if you don't forward this the child will die so you know it starts pulling on your heartstrings and i feel like if i don't like canada as no no as he looks at carlito because i get the same facebook posts from carlito Uh, and if i don't forward carlito's post then the child will die so you know i feel i feel an obligation he did say in previous uh, podcasts that he actually uses facebook for propaganda so Ah, classic uh, carlito that's exactly Uh, what's going on Croatia, lots of propaganda there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's the. I'm assuming word of mouth. Yeah, pretty much uh, word of mouth. Instagram. I post a lot of stories. A lot of love the stories. I love the finger pointing. I love the moving around. That's pictures <laughs> of my dogs, my shop. Love the puppies. My, my food, my barbecue, <laughs> things like that. But going and then ba- every once in a while, I'll throw in a little woodworking. Going back <laughs> to what you were saying, what I found really interesting about Tony was. Typically, when I go on a job site, I'm picking at, and I shouldn't be, but it's just who I am. I'm picking at people's work, and I'm really never totally happy working with other contractors. There's always something that irritates me. They leave their banana on the floor, or, you know. Did you, not to, but yeah, did you see in Miami, they were doing that big art expo thing, and a banana duct taped to a wall just sold for 130 grand. Get out of <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. No, dead serious. Unpeeled or like appealed? No, no. Uh, unpeeled. And it was like kind of already getting spotty. So whoever bought that in two days, that's... <laughs> it's going to be a different piece of art. Yeah. So anyway, carry on, Curly. Oh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> you mentioned the banana. Uh, you know what, Tony? You're just bananas. <laughs> um, no. So typically when I show up at a job site, I try not to say too much because... I'm not very impressed with most of the contractors having not the right attitude. I was so impressed with you, Tony. Honestly, ah, thank you. I'm going to say it here. You may not have the years of experience that you think you should have in construction, but you're a great role model for someone so what? less in time. Based on what? My experience. What this do you mean, like the years experience. of experience? Okay, so I've spent 30 years, and he's better than me. I know that uh, someone can come in. And yeah, but it, I'm a I'm a one I'm a one trick pony though, right? Yeah, like but I'm very no, no, I'm very no, no. into my one thing. I've, if you put a paintbrush in my hand, it's gonna look awful at the end. I mean, you can come in and see. But your you've kitchen. taken your skills and you you maximize your skills. So I wouldn't say it's one trick pony. I'm saying <laughs> that you found exactly what you are really good at. I enjoy like, doing. I know sure. Carlito tried gynecology school and he just is no good at it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh. <laughs> I complained. I, I always, you know, the, the problem is with that is I was always eating. Ew. 
<laughs> so I had to drop out of that course. <laughs> no, but getting back to Tony and this because this this moment needs to be for you, Tony. I need you to know this, okay? I'm not in a relationship with you, but <laughs> I'm trying to earn your respect. <laughs> you have it. Don't worry. No, seriously. Let's get. You know what? I, I know this is yearning. I know this is burning. I know this is itching. I know this. Are we still is talking about me going back to no, school? No, 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 no. This is. I'm, I'm gonna have to remove that. Um, that uh, okay, why don't you ask Tony what tool brand does he prefer? Ooh, wow. Well, I already because I idea. respect Tony for his opinions on the tools for a reason. So, why? Our, so our ongoing joke is as the camera is pointing to a stack of sustainers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what tool do you prefer, mm. and for what? Um, dun, dun, dun. Dun. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't really i don't know i think uh you brand, have no, you brand have no loyalty, loyalty brand loyalty is for fools I that's think. in my i respect, in my opinion, him, for I respect that. him for that i don't too. know it's i do like whatever gets the job done and helps you do it easiest like for me cordless stuff i have makita because they were the first to come out with a good cordless quarter inch router for me that was a no-brainer and then now everyone has one so i could easily switch and you know be none the wiser they're all great i don't think that one is like so specifically amazing i use the stainers because they stack and unstack easily again those i got before they had any of the new the new boxes ones that, yeah. yeah so now all the those other systems. ones are there as well so I probably could get along with those as well, but it's what I have, so now I just stick with that. That's the part that... The only <coughs> tools that are really good are cast iron, and you Wait generally don't bring those on site. So. Yeah, but I want to talk about your <laughs> chop saws. Oh. You have a very special set of Ooh. chop saws. Why don't uh, we yeah. talk about that? Because most people don't realize <laughs> how intimate you can get with your chop saw. <laughs> there's a lot of detail to Manny's it. Manny's the one missing a lot the finger. Importance. No, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're talking when when we're talking to Tony. It comes to machinery. He huh. wants accuracy, and I never appreciated machinery as much until I met you, and I never realized uh. how deep and depth yeah. there is into machinery. Tony, so how do you choose a chop saw? I let's get to the I... big toys. Let's go okay, to the so two big I've toys. Okay, so I've got the predominantly used the uh, Hitachi C10 FSH, older Japanese models. They're light, they're Japanese. super accurate. They're sliders. They're Japanese, obviously. Why do you use them? Why? Yeah. Because he lived oh, in Japan. Deadly accurate. And yeah, I did live in Japan for twelve years. <laughs> and I know I know they do things very well. So, so that's important. They're deadly accurate, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then. In the shop here, you've got a what for a table saw? For table saw, it's a Delta contractor saw. And then for job sites? For job sites, just a little, the small uh, DeWalt. The DeWalt. Yeah. So, you know, Carlitos, you mix them there. all up. You know? Listen, I'll tell you why I love the DeWalt tables. They mm -hmm. got these little pins and the track doesn't move. And when I go to the other brands, they're constantly moving and kicking out of place. I love that you have no brand loyalty and that basically you look at tools as... What do I need for the job? Exactly. Yeah. That's it. And that's the truth. That's what it should be. It, and that's why everyone chooses their tool. They'll, cho they'll choose it for the job. They should choose it not for whoever is the cool kid on Instagram or whatever, yeah. or the cool tool. Well, it's not about that. This can take a toll see a lot on you, of that, though. though, right? Like, you see, there are guys, it's like, as soon as a new tool drops, it's like, I need to have that. And like, do you really need to have that? Do you actually need that? Do you actually need a new square when you have six squares? It's like, no. Is it, this one going to be more square? Are, no, tools no. are like shoes. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the way. I, yeah, it is fun for sure, right? right? But you can easily get into that trap of needing the brand new thing, and then you end up focusing more on tools than the actual work. And that's something I see a lot Thank where guys that's will exact. show up with like shiny new tools, and then they're like struggling to case a window or something. But they've got know. the best but, tool. I mean, yeah. But then, you know, there are guys as well that have crappy tools and then they do a great job. And I think the balance is somewhere in between. Like for me personally, I like having nice stuff. It makes it, it's fun to work with nice tools. You know, it's enjoyable. So I don't like using crappy stuff. But then at the same time, if I couldn't do it with crappy stuff, then am I really that great a carpenter? Probably not. Mm, like you should be able point. to be versatile. Point, very both. good point. Great point. So. <laughs> Can I ask you, do you like cordless or corded better? Cordless for certain things. Like I didn't, I'm not super on board with 
the cordless chop saws and table saws. Why? Unless you can get me a early 2000s model Japanese C10 FSH cordless, I probably wouldn't be interested in a cordless <laughs> chop saw. Any, um, anybody out for, there have one? For table saws? I don't know. I mean, I can see in certain areas when they would be handy, but for the most part, if I'm setting up the saw, You've going got through power. all the effort to set up a table saw, then I probably will have the power. I can't justify it. Yeah, basically. those those saws were designed for guys who need to come in and just do a quick yeah, cut here like and there. Yeah, like cabinet guys. It makes total sense. Yeah, right. But 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 everybody else, you, you've got power. you got power. So yeah. set it up. Set it up your <clears throat> shop, right? That's all it is. If I'm going to be on a job for a week or, or more, then I get like really into it, set everything up really nice, have all the jigs in place, everything stacked nicely, and just... Trying to keep things organized really makes the job more enjoyable. And then also, like, it just goes smoother when you know where everything is, everything's organized. I don't get into, like, cutting out perfect little pieces of foam for each tool because, I don't know, too much work maybe. But at least everything has its place. I know where everything is. <laughs> it and, look, like, it, it looks works good pretty. for me. It, go it works good for me. It looks really so, pretty on it's Instagram. One size you have all. OCD. I love it. Yeah. I want to pick another fight with Carlito here. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Yeah, what? What? Okay, what? Okay, what? No, what? No, do that. <laughs> okay, ready? Ready? Go. Poplar or MDF, Tony? Poplar. Well, it depends. Depends. Depends on. Uh, what? What you? What are you doing? Uh, oh, let's just go with trim. Let's go. Oh, if with... we're going. Oh, for the most part, yeah, you would do poplar. If you're doing paneling, what are you going to do? Loads of poplar panels. No, I mean, obviously no. your MDF. You mix. Is, if you're paneling, you're mixing it. But for trim, baseboard. Yeah. Oh yeah. Poplar. Yeah. Okay. Poplar, absolutely. So, so over my, to you, my, <laughs> my fight is I deal with more blue collared homes where people can't afford quality wood, and and I have a preference also. I really like to use MDF everywhere except for the laundry room, the washroom, any where there's moisture. I will not use MDF. Why yeah. is that? Well, we all know it will spread. <laughs> well, if I could, if I could get it in high density instead of medium density, you know, an Aqua MDF, but they're not doing that yet. So a lot of people just really hate on MDF, like, oh, it's so terrible and so awful. But like, there definitely is its place and yeah, it's, flexibility. Yeah, it's it's for, it's for boards, for sheets. It's yeah. awful for in your lungs. Scotting. It's awful in your it's, lungs. I but hate it. I hate breathing it. I hate cutting it. I hate the. I mean, the good thing is it's always vacuum. it's always perfectly straight and maybe like lower end jobs where they're doing everything in MDF, all the casing and all that. If your saw is tuned in nicely and you're cutting miters in MDF, you know for sure they're going to be perfectly square when you're not working with material like poplar for instance like unless you've got a jointer on site and jointer and a planer you're going to end up with some wonky boards twisting and fighting whereas mdf like it's exactly where you need it to be so and there's you said pros well. and cons right you said it really well i would i i was doing crown molding and real wood it just kept twisting and turning oh and yeah it In didn't matter that it Toronto was Toronto homes the, the ceilings are just an abomination it's a fight that you don't want <laughs> and have. then you have crazy degrees like it's not even normal yeah, measurements exactly. anymore you're just like changing everything and you're trying to figure it out and let's it get into forever. a little roulette here so coping miter uh well i cope i don't know how to miter inside corners i just don't know how to do it well, okay. oh okay. i can't get them to look nice it just looks like a child did so it. cope it's got its it's got its place coping definitely is the choice to go to for a finished carpenter but if you're working for an insurance company you're not going to make any money coping so you got a cope master or yeah or depending or like depending grinder. on the depending on the uh like the profile right if it's step bevel which everybody and their brother is putting in their house nowadays. i can't i could stand still that. i could still cope faster than <laughs> i could hate her. that let's go let's go right there what's your go-to what's your favorite profile right now these mm, days there tony flat stock it's very easy flat. to cope. <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't have a favorite to be honest. dude i've seen you layer uh, i've seen you reinvent baseboards and casings and crown molding layers and layers and layers <laughs> to hear you say square stock makes me laugh <laughs> how about glue Glue? What's your go-to glue? You a type bond guy? I do like type bond. If you're just doing a ton of casings and whatever, you don't need to go for a sp special crazy brand. Like a lot of the like the cheaper ones that you get the five gallon bucket of, they hold just as good. It's not like you need to get a brand of glue that's gonna, in my opinion, I yeah, don't know, from I what agree. I've seen. I, I do use the the hyper glue though for miters and things like that because it's it speeds things up so much. Incredibly strong. Well, you introduced me to that at yeah. Manny's Did you site. end up getting it? You know what? I love it. <laughs> I do. I yeah. love everything you do. And that is totally a game changer. And, and just so to people... To use that overused thing. Yeah, it's <clears> definitely <throat> a game changer. But 
Well, you know, one thing that the listeners need to know is that if Tony's doing some baseboard uh, you would just think uh oh, cope or you know. i don't use hyper and baseboard just for the record but no but uh, what i was leading to was when you're going down a staircase i'll see you glue and crown nail behind the baseboards and uh, you'll yeah. clamp them and they'll be perfect and it doesn't matter what's wrong with the wall that baseboard <laughs> will be perfect <laughs> And uh, I respect you for that's that goal, because hopefully. you'll spend five minutes somewhere where it's the most important because someone walking down the staircase or that detail usually is the spot where everyone complains and you <laughs> exactly. highlight it. And like, you don't want someone tripping looking at something that's so hideous yeah. falling down the stairs. So. Tony, what don't you like about the industry right now without pissing people off i uh, know it doesn't matter no, piss people off i like uh, it <laughs> uh, i don't know like i it's one thing that i think is always kind of bizarre is when see people just come this overused thing of like oh my god this guy did crappy work like before me it's just okay we get it people do shitty work it happens like stop being so surprised that those things happen it's like <laughs> <laughs> people like contractors or, or trades guys will walk into jobs like, oh my God, it's, oh, like this is so terrible. And they're usually saying it to the client so that it makes it seem to the client that what they're going to do is so amazing. And maybe it is, oh. but it's like, okay, we get it. People do bad work. They've always done bad work. If you're going to do great work, then it, it's going to stand out. Just let it stand out. You don't have to like sit there and like shit all over the other guy just to make yourself seem like you are better. And I, I don't know. It's just you see it in like TV shows and whatever. And it's just it's so overused. We get it that people do bad work. Everybody, I'm, Everybody's just rubbernecking online. <laughs> I'm happy you went back to the conversation that... So I started a conversation and Manny finished it for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he always groups me into these things that are not legit. I never did any so, of this stuff. He's a real so, bully. That's so true. like I was saying earlier, I was really impressed to come on to Manny's site and see what you were capable of or how much mm. love you put into work. It inspired me to be a better contractor at his site because he had guys like you that... <laughs> no, and it really, huh. it takes... You know, you could be in this industry 30 years and you could spend 15 years being one of those haters. And I'm I'm one of those guys that you just talked about. <laughs> I'm, I, I go and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe he did that. Why did he do that? To me, it's not about me chopping up. I'm just surprised that it he could have taken a second more yeah. to do something better than to just leave it as garbage. Exactly. But are you surprised that somebody did that? Like at this point, seeing how humanity is, are we actually really <laughs> surprised that people do shitty work? No, but people what I... can't drive. People <laughs> run over your toes with the shopping cart. Like the fact that someone does crappy work is should be the least of the, the things that we're surprised know, did, about. Did somebody but... recently just run over you with a shopping cart? Uh, it on happens here? a lot. While, and while I, wear Crocs. Phone, I wear Crocs. I wear steel toe Crocs. So I'm mean, usually right. <laughs> but that, that leads back to what i was just about to get to i was so impressed with you it was so nice and refreshing to see someone at a site finishing something or taking care of someone else's garbage that they never finished <laughs> without a peep without any complaints and this and this is the beauty of working with someone like you you have a, a really cool attitude you don't ah, care you. you don't care that the guy left crap work for you you don't advertise it you no. don't put it in the newspaper you don't put it on <laughs> podcasts uh, every uh, once in a while I, I will definitely get into it like if you, you'll if get you into stuff that's, that's not like... really construction related you'll just you'll see something in the world and, and all of a sudden like i gotta share this man <laughs> i but, gotta share this but the truth is uh, is look at how many years you've put into this yeah. business and you've blown my mind like ah, thank you, i have thank so you. much respect that's for your kind. finishes your <laughs> jigs your setup your tear down uh the way you've reinvented your jigs and your tools like you've taken an, a great product and they even made huh. it better you should become an inventor you are definitely <laughs> definitely huh. macgyver have yes. you ever seen tony load up or uh, or load up load in or load Dude, out on what his he truck? puts in his truck <laughs> should yeah. be in a cube truck i know i know the way it's uh, stacked yes. inside that truck but if you go to open it up good luck yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. it all comes fault tumbling out <laughs> down no, the 401 but he's got these amazing tables. So if anyone knows Tony, you'll know that like he just doesn't come in with a stand. He comes in with two tables, a table made just for his miter saw. It all connects with each other. He doesn't need a labor. Everything's smooth and flush. <laughs> for some reason, if you run a piece of material over his table without a machine hooked up, the, the piece of wood will come out cleaner and smoother <laughs> just by rubbing on his table. <laughs> so I got to ask Tony, yeah. why no apprentice 
Um, yeah, basically, because I am not a very good businessman, I'm very focused on the actual work, but I'm not very business oriented. So, like, so you're pretty on, much like everybody else. Uh, I'd that's say in I'm, construction. I'd, I would think that I'm worse, like, because I've never had anyone work for me, and there's tons of times when I really could use someone, but I just I don't know how to find someone. I don't know how to like do the whole payroll thing. I that stuff is just so far out of like you're, my you're, realm but of the what thing I understand. Is what, what, I need to learn, it, obviously. Cause what what I noticed right off the get get go with you, what I noticed right off the bat was you're a natural teacher, though. Am I? Yeah, yeah. You taught me tons the, already. The way the way Good, very yeah, very I, short. I, I mean, there's <laughs> other monkeys that know like about a hundred words in sign language too, right? So it's just like no, but he's an, he's a natural teacher. Like you, the way you explain certain things to people and how it's done or how you did it, it's basically just knowledge that's being absorbed, right? So I can see you teaching somebody, but I totally respect that all of us out there that don't know how to run the paper side of the yeah, business. Yeah, like that. I I am just a child when it comes to those things. I I have no idea. So my my. My wife does all the uh, paperwork, and I just I do the work. I come home, say here, make it work somehow. Are She's you interested really in expanding? I mean, eventually, yeah. I don't think I'm really there yet. I still like, yeah. I've, I haven't been in the business very long. I have a lot to learn. Where do you get your knowledge from? A lot of stuff. It's all online. Like a lot of stuff from Instagram mainly. Wow. Because like, there's there's so many guys out there that are posting little tips and tricks and. All the the jigs that I make, I'm sure I stole them from someone else, and you know it's just like <laughs> well, it's there every, it's, to take. It's, it's a yeah, it's a yeah, wealth of knowledge out there that people there. are always sharing. But you're giving them things. credit too, right? So you're noticing something, and I mean, yeah, if it yeah. if it is something that helps me out a lot, I'll usually post and say like, oh yeah, this guy posted this. This was helpful for me. And Tony, what is your goal for retirement? I mean, I know it's a long ways away, but. You well, must have a plan that you're working on, the 20-year retirement plan. You're as only previously 32. mentioned, I am a child when it comes to these things. So. <laughs> no, no, but I you have to prepare for that. Yeah, like, no, absolutely. Right. And so eventually my goal, what I would like to do is a small, I'd like to have a small trim company with three or four experienced guys. And then I really like being on the tools right now. I really like doing the job, but obviously, you know, I don't want to be in my... 60s ripping four by eight sheets of mdf so eventually i will have to take on some help and i'll get there just i'm not sure how to do it yet you keep talking about you had times where you needed someone to work for you and you don't have anyone working for you so that you don't have the overhead responsibility of keeping someone busy and not getting paid and having to pay them when you ha mm -hmm. don't have the money or the budget's not there what would be the right attitude for someone that wanted to have an opportunity to work with you what were you what would you be looking for and what kind of attitude would they need basically someone who's just uh, and you know what i've i've actually had a lot of those people uh reach out to me just through the stories or whatever just saying like dude uh, i'd love to like learn and i'm really interested in doing this kind of stuff and i like the work that you do if you ever need help let me know and i'm always like oh that's awesome thank you you know it's i like hearing that eventually i would like to reach back out to one of those guys who have that kind of attitude who are just like i don't care i just i just want to get in there and work i'd like to get one of those guys like basically someone who is of that kind of it's mind not work. about money it's about the no, knowledge they're just like they really they really love the work and yeah. they really just want to learn which is kind of like that's kind of how i i feel like i am in not a contrived way it's just i really like woodwork i really like i do it that's my hobby as well i do it for work and then it's also so when I come home in the evenings, I'll sit and build something like the whole house in here is furnished with my furniture, some better than others, Wicked. just over, over time. It. So, yeah, like if you get someone like that where it's it's not just a job, you actually really love doing it. Those that's the kind of person, obviously. So right? I've seen you on job sites and you really don't you're very involved with everybody, <laughs> but you like to keep to yourself. And when you yeah, get in, when you get, get out working. Grill. You don't want anyone talking to you. You'll get pretty frustrated. You like to focus on your work. I think work. that's only applicable to you. <laughs> no, For some weird reason. There's only I'm, so I'm many dick jokes that. you can take. <laughs> what? Carlito and dick Wait jokes? That never happened. It's since we're, and, and this is funny you say that because there was one day he said, what? No dick jokes? So I mean, honestly, I was shocked. They're like, who are you and what have you done with our friend okay, Carlito? So since we're here, I just wanted to say, do you like hardwood? <laughs> My coaster here is a nice piece of uh eat bay? Yeah. there we go okay so not getting off a topic i was interested in my next question to that would be 
How do you feel about you're 32? Yes. How do you feel about young people in the industry, older people in the industry? You know, people are talking, you know, young people don't care anymore. They don't have the right attitude. Old people are ready to retire. What's your outlook to that? Technically, I don't know. You're, I don't, are you a millennial? Yeah, I think so. I'm no. a, a 35, you're, you're, I think, is You're millennial. an elder millennial. That's yeah. right, an elder. So I still, like, hate all millennials. I'm that, I'm that guy. <laughs> um, That's a harsh word to be using but, on a recording device. But, but, he, but, said, okay. but he said equally. <laughs> um, um, Especially the Dutch. Yes, okay. <laughs> uh, wait, what was the original question? Oh, yeah, millennials, young people. Yeah. Um, and old people. Yeah, well, for the... Age I don't groups. think a lot of the young guys that I'll see on Instagram, there's tons of guys that are super into it. Basically... If you have the right attitude, I don't care if you're 52, 32, 22, like there's guys that are super into it. Yeah, I don't think age is a big deal. It's cool when you see like older guys that are still interested in, in learning and they obviously have a wealth of knowledge because they've been doing it for years. But then there's they'll still see younger guys doing things that, you know, maybe using newer technology, like ripping down sheets with a handsaw anymore. They're using a table saw, crazy things like that. So you get those kind of guys right. where they still are interested in learning and adapting. Yeah, they're, you know, Evolving. they're they're constantly wanting to, you know, further themselves. That's I think really cool. And then young guys that are interested in learning, not thinking they know everything. That's also neat to see. And I think there's tons of guys like that. And it's not you get, sometimes you get this idea or it's put out there they're like oh all hope is lost young people are just ruining everything and a lot of times they are but like enough to create the stereotype i was <laughs> gonna ask you tony like are the young guys asking too much to be paid like for the work that they're doing depends on the work they're doing i guess i don't think so i don't know don't be safe on me tony tell me how it is <laughs> <laughs> tell more, me more young over there wants to know the truth <laughs> I find that there's a lot of guys that are asking for more than they're really worth. Is that an age thing or is it because they're not skilled enough? I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. I think that's how they're looking at it. But I do find it really ironic that most younger guys in their 20s are always asking for a rate that's slightly higher than Classic. their age. Classic. I know what you're leading to. And for me, it's always... No, you don't. It's always been this. <laughs> I'm worth $65 an hour. And I'm like... I'll fucking tell you if you're worth $65 an hour because <laughs> you're going to be working for me. And even if you're subbing from me, I'm still going to tell you if you're worth that. And if you're not, you're just never going to work for me again. You're sacked. Or with me. There's another thing about you, Tony. You don't do normal jobs. Not that you won't, but <laughs> you're a custom guy. All the work you do is custom. I guess everything is kind of custom, right? Unless you're doing following a sheet specifically you always gotta especially with old homes like renovations right it's basically ends up being custom because you have to make new things work in old spaces so there's nothing more custom than that and a lot of the i mean almost all the work that i've done downtown has always been the like the renovation side it's always adding a little bit more on fixing it up a bit i haven't done any ground up stuff from in the city up Around here, like King City, there's a lot of new homes, so you'll end up doing more... Intricate? Yeah, I guess so. But then all the stuff downtown, at least that I've done, has been the renovation side where you're tying in old with new. So that ends up being kind of a little more custom. Do you prefer the old? Do you prefer the new? Uh, depends I, on what the new is. It, yeah, it depends. A lot of the, the newer stuff that I've done, the higher end of homes up in King City and whatnot, there will be bigger homes, bigger profiles, bigger, you know, bigger casing. That's bigger nice baseboard. to see. I it's, do, I do yeah. like seeing that. Yeah, it's it's fun to work with because it's definitely a challenge. Like the one I was just doing up there is seven inch casing around the doors and then seven wow. fourteen casing. Are you 14 serious? and a half inch base? So. Fourteen and a half inch <laughs> base. Wow. Base. How many layers? <laughs> uh it is a four piece base. Stacked. Yeah. And Overlap. Then, and then uh plinth blocks and then the seven inch casing and 10 foot doors, wow. two and a quarter inch thick, 10 foot doors. With so, uh, five inches? No, yeah, five, five inches. inches. Five, five inch brass hinges. So. Let me ask you it was something. Beautiful. You, it's you're, fun, but you, it's definitely challenging. Yeah, you're doing some really <laughs> cool stuff. Is this really what you want to be doing, though? Oh, yeah. Like absolutely. sometimes I know, like doing that stuff. Okay, so that's what you. So, what are your favorite things to do? Like, if, if people are listening right now and they wanted to hire you, what is the work that you really want to push? Can't do uh, that. You, you can't do. answer that question, man. <laughs> no, but there's things As you like trade, to do. No, like, no, I love no, doing no, wainscoting. No, no, no. Honestly, I like the variety. 
I'll be doing that kind of stuff for a while. And then over time, you know, if you're doing that every single day, it gets a little boring. It's nice to throw in a cabinet every now and then and do some shop work. Do you or make even, furniture Even a little more modern thing. Yeah, I've done quite a few pieces. That's not... For a while there, that was going to be my focus. I don't know. I don't think I can be competitive to be able to pump out furniture fast enough. Plus, sure you um, can. You can do a live edge table and charge. No, but everyone's $10, doing dollars. live edge now. Yeah. Everyone mm. I talk to, I'm doing a live edge table. Are you I was cool? being sarcastic <laughs> with my comment there. <laughs> you didn't wants notice a live that. Edge table. <laughs> I was going to do an epoxy for table. Let, let, Tony, let me ask you: which is uh, which is your least favorite trade? Which is the Ooh. trade that you look oh. at and you go, thank goodness. Whatever Carlito you is. You came yeah. into construction. <laughs> you came into construction, so you had a taste of every single trade until you found your... I don't have a least favorite trade. There's least favorite things that I like to do. I hate painting. You can't stand painting, huh? I cannot stand... I'm just so bad at it. It doesn't matter. Like, I suddenly, as soon as I need to cut in a ceiling, I just I just can't paint. I'm so bad How at it. Staining? And I have no patience for it. But Flo didn't even teach you a little bit? Or? No, not a, not, a, not a smidge. What? <laughs> He's not really a teacher, He's though. He's hoarding his knowledge. <laughs> How about staining? Staining? Oh, I don't like staining either. Wow. Staining actually is one of my least favorite things, just because I think if you are going to make something that is stain grade... You should be using the color of wood that's going to end up that color. So if you if you want a darker finish, get a darker wood. Don't get maple and then spend all the time staining it, trying to make it look like walnut. It's just another step. It ends up, I don't know. You'd rather oil it. I like a clear coat on yeah. whatever wood you're going to have. Obviously, there's times when you need to, I right? Agree. But I, I, I'm not a fan of staining. I've seen you complain once or twice, and huh? it's I. typically <laughs> been about pocket door hardware or uh, pocket doors. How do you feel about pocket doors and which ones do you like and which ones don't you like crowder makes a really nice track either using lsl framing or they have a nice they have a nice whole track system a little plug for crowder there yeah, yeah. Plug, I, plug, I, plug, I expect plug. to get i expect Manny to get approves. paid for that crowder many <laughs> approves i saw him nodding his I head don't over you there. have you ever i thought you used yeah, you, they're good i don't know that's the best one i've ever used yes. i've done like a few different ones and if you get the cheap ones they're just so a horrible nightmare. and they always yeah. they always end up having issues and pocket doors like if they're not done perfect they are going to have issues totally. if you got standard two by four framing on either side you're looking at something that's 100 percent going to be a callback while we're on pocket doors two of the things that i always see as problems with pocket doors is where the door is it always rubs in the middle you got any tricks i usually put a like a little piece of wood in there and rubs in the middle I'll, what on the along with the framing yeah right in well the yeah because that, that's that goes back to using like standard two by four framing or something if you're using their pocket door kit then it's got the steel stud the much thicker steel i think it's like uh, i want to say 16 or 18 gauge steel tubular steel yeah, yeah that stuff's really good or if you do lsls and they're perfectly straight that works out pretty nice so your tip you is do steel to, well yeah well that's if you're starting from the beginning if you're just repairing one that is rubbing you can always throw a piece of felt further in back on the door the like the adhesive backed felt and then that just keeps it from rubbing as it goes through so it's not mm. like every time you open that's like that's just a, a is that repair, is that basically. on the bottom and the top or in no, the middle do it also? along on the side just wow. further back where it's in the jam like that's 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 an extra piece you would put in if the door is already there it's already in bad condition you had to just you, you know you're not going to rip out the painters whole thing would hate it. you why because that felt you got to paint it. <laughs> no, back in in it never comes out. Basically, you stick it in there back behind. Oh, and behind uh, the nice. jams. Good trick. Another thing I always notice about pocket doors is I was always taught that they should be removable after they're in place, yeah. so that you could repair them or fix them or you know just get in there to do whatever you have to do. Ninety percent of pocket doors installed. Once they're in, they're in. You yeah. can't get them out. So what's the trick to that? I think there are. There's a new system. I'm not sure what it's called, but they do have one that can be removed. It's some kind of. I saw it somewhere, but I'm I'm not sure what it is. But you should be able to remove at least the top two pieces of jam on the top. Yeah, I mean, so that way I've, you can remove I've the seen door. it done where you can if you if you build it in such a way that you can maybe use magnets so that the top is the one side of the jam is removable beautiful obviously it takes a bunch more time but i guess if that's something that you know you want to be able to take it out then that's so an option. i don't think it's so much about taking out the door as much as it is just over time adjusting the door so if yeah. it's accessible to adjust right because yeah, you're the always house will move and sort of use and slamming and all this other stuff that you are going to actually be out of plumb at some point but i don't think you need to remove a door well here's my next question with pocket doors because pocket doors are so interesting for me. 
and there's so much controversy mm. with them. Better um, not to do them. I think. How, wh- controversy where, with pocket where, doors? Where was the right place to use a pocket door, and where's the wrong place? No, no. People have told really? me, don't use them for bathroom. There's too much humidity. <clears throat> Most people don't realize that you have to paint the door completely around. Right. You have to paint the stuff before you put it in. That way, the humidity doesn't get into the work. You don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think. I don't think there's a right or wrong place for a pocket door. It's personal preference at that no, time. No, but outside it, of functionality. So if you've got a tiny room like a powder room, that is beyond my realm of understanding yes to answer yeah. your question i would suggest I, don't know. I think it's personal i think it's personal i i do like pocket doors but i would i would not put up every single door a pocket door right yeah I would, i'd start feeling like i'm in a portable or something or i'm in a submarine or i'm in a, like somewhere where it's weird it feels weird i like regular doors i do like, like a swing regular door. swinging doors that close nicely and click solid well solid. i don't mind pocket doors but i i just like regular doors. how about door hardware I, i've seen you get angry before because <laughs> there's bad hardware <laughs> that know, goes back to clients some some people like manny are very eccentric and their sites don't just have turn handles they have locking mechanisms and just a little note do not choose a cheap pocket door hardware don't put a turn handle on a pocket door yes because what's going to happen is your trim person like tony is going to take longer to do it because it's more difficult and he will whinge and cry the entire time he has to install it and the bill will be higher that's That's just what i was leading to (laughs) what kind of doors do you like to do do you like hollow core doors do you like solid doors what's wrong with you seven foot doors solid doors you don't have no preference a nice quality solid core door and height what do you like seeing eight foot doors perfect wow eight foot doors you need a 10 foot ceiling yeah well you can get away with a nine foot an an 80 an 80 inch door is great i don't know this is weird though it's like saying asking a asking a painter what's your favorite color i don't know what's your favorite door that's true as long as they don't say if you ask them what color and they say black what black doors you don't like because it's a shade oh (laughs) it's black so tony so you've got Uh, an artiste is among (laughs) us tony you you've got you got a little bit of uh japanese asian influence right Uh, so we won't get it yeah we won't get into that world but i i do see you and i also respect the japanese for this is that all that hand carpentry woodworking oh yeah you ever going to get into any of that kind of stuff? That's the kind of stuff I like doing at home for myself. People that show up on site and use a router plane to cut out a mortise for your locks, like, I don't know. I think that's a bit ridiculous. Like, I've never seen that myself. <laughs> Someone show up and do that. <laughs> yeah. You've seen it? Uh, yeah, here and there. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's not efficient. I get it. I, I really do like it. I like doing the... Uh, Using the hand tools at home for specific woodwork tasks. Now you got to use power tools for the most part on site. It is twenty twenty. So <laughs> I got a couple more questions for you around windows. Do you? I want to hear your pros and cons to MDF, poplar, or what material do you like around an outside window? Poplar, I think, for the most part. And or uh, recently for doing some of the windows, we've started using MDX, the exterior MDF. And that's pretty decent. Yeah, that's decent to work with. That stuff is very, very waterproof. Like you can submerge it in water for a month. You won't get any mushrooming with the the brads? No? No. I mean, Ah, there's a question. If you're you're holding, if you're pushing your nail gun in close enough, then it's it's gonna, they'll be all right. And then even if you do get some mushrooming, you sand everything afterward, it's great. Here's a, I'm going to poke the bear now. Mm. Uh, Have you found a pneumatic nailer? That you like? Dum now? dum dum. <laughs> Found one that I don't like. <laughs> I, I, I know which uh, one. I know which funny. one you're talking about. Generally, anything that is green. No, no. Is horrendous. No, and expensive. Uh, uh, but, uh, no, I don't know. I honestly, I like. I, found, the, I, I like my Grex guns. Yeah, but the thing is, with the higher end guns. It just, yours, for instance, yours is nice, but you're also not driving a thousand nails a day. No. So, like, I think, like, the one that I had, I'm not going to say any names. I will. I had a specific one. It's been in repair so many times, and now it's a hundred bucks to fix it again. I'm just, just not going to But just bother. for the record, it was not a Grex gun. No, it wasn't. It was green, but it was not a Grex yeah. gun. And <laughs> just for the, the record. But then I've seen so many guys that do use the higher end guns, and it's just, it's constant problems as well. Like, you, know, you got a good point. I mean, the come thing on, is, you're going to get. Eight hundred dollars for a gun. You're gonna get no, problems no, no. with the cheaper ones, but with a cheaper one, throw it in the trash and get another one. With the other ones, you get the same problems, but you spent four hundred bucks on it from the start. I'm and that so happy is, you said that. 
That is unacceptable. I still have my original <laughs> Porter cable from 10 years ago. Yeah. That's got glue all over I it. I still yeah. have I'm... my Bostage. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> but honestly, believe it or not, I love my DeWalt pin nailers, my DeWalt yeah. nailers. Oh, like, you lost me at DeWalt. Sorry. Yeah, mm. No, I just do. <laughs> like, you know what? I don't have dents anymore. I don't have yeah. lines. It's just a pin. Pink. And it's cheap and affordable. And like you said... Instead of repairing it, I can just throw it to someone that's already got another one. They can use uh, parts to fix theirs. Yeah, exactly. Right? That, I think that they all will end up having problems. The only thing is you spent $400 on one. You don't want to have problems. Well, let's talk about maintenance. Do you oil your gun yeah, every well, time? The, and how many drops of oil do you put into your one gun every day? One drop of oil day? and the ones that need oil, the Bostage Smart Point 18-gauge ones that I use, the stapler and 18-gauge and, uh, nail gun, those are oilless. So those... No maintenance, and I've had no problems with those. I've wow. had those forever. The one pass load, 16 gauge, I've never had an issue with that one. That one does take a drop of oil, but that thing's been amazing. 23 gauge guns are the ones I've gone through so many of them. They're just trash. I don't know. You got to try you the, just can't, the Greg's one, man. Goes up to two inch. Yeah. Pinless. But, well, for one, you don't need, you, I can't think of a situation where that you, you need a two I inch. Don't, uh, I know. It just, it's nice to have it. Yeah, I would try it. I don't know if they gave me one, I'd take one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not gonna spend four hundred dollars on one to have it break the same as the other one, because then then I'll throw it through a wall, throw it out in the snow, and <laughs> <laughs> once again at the start of the podcast, we did realize that Tony's got no brand loyalty whatsoever to any tool company out there, which is so refreshing to I hear these agree. days. Agree. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, is there a tool? Because we all know how much Carlito loves Makita, and you've got a wide range of Makita. Yeah. And I do, uh, I do agree that Makita has come up with the most interesting tools for interesting jobs. Most efficient. Most efficient. Yeah, I agree. I'll give you that much. Is there a tool that has not been invented yet that you would want oh. on your in your arsenal? Oh yeah, this is good. Uh, you too. That's a question for you too as well, Carlito. Dude, dude is after, there a tool? Let's hear. Th- let's hear yours first, Carlito. Maybe I'll expand on that because I, I actually don't. Okay, think- so. So for me, it's not so much about the tools. I find that I really like what you were saying earlier. I like the boxes. The boxes have made my life change. So if we're talking about tools, the boxes are more of a tool to me than the actual tools. But you don't have any sustainers. Oh, I have tons. Oh, my whole truck, my whole truck is oh, yeah, Dewalt boxes, and then all my Fest tool has their own boxes. So oh, okay, and it's changed my world because now I can have the box and I can have it organized. And even if I have a triples of tools, I have them in those boxes labeled. It's made my life so much easier. Yeah, you know? organization is really yeah. key. So if we're talking about tools, uh, oh man, um, I honestly can't think of any. To be honest, like that. I, that's someone else's job. You come up with the tools. I, I think I think we need to get a more powerful. <laughs> that's smaller, someone else's job. I think someone needs to come up with a stronger, smaller vacuum cleaner. I find that the yeah. smaller vacuum cleaners just aren't strong enough. They're cordless. Yeah. I would like to see a more powerful cordless vacuum cleaner because I need that. Bosch yeah. has got a good one gallon one cordless you should get that yeah. backpack one that's pretty cool i yeah, love the ghost i saw that one but that's more like a finishing i want something like you know <laughs> there her, saying. shout out to flow <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate ghostbuster believe it or not like i've got a healthy vacuum for my concrete right. of course I've, he does i've got my fest tool for my drywall and my stucco my go-to vacuum cleaners are my rigid and yeah. they are the powerhouses they do bucks. my rotor zipping <laughs> they do my vacuuming of water and concrete and chunks i would love to see them reinvent a vacuum a little bit corner friendly oh you know what i've got an idea for a hoseless someone. vacuum that's what i want to see <laughs> bring it just the a vortex gets a vortex of air just on the job site that just sucks all the micro dust out of the air no well, they have uh, air movers you, you know what i'd like to see because we it, and it hasn't been really reinvented it in a long long time and i know that it was tried but it, it, it wasn't successful a proper job site table setup there like is not a saw company horses, that, not that, a centipede i mean is and there tony's a, fixed that well i already. always yeah that's, that's a hard one because most people like making their own like what you were saying they don't have that the what's his name polk andrew polk something polk the guy who makes these style of benches here that's technically a portable table somebody invented that a lot of guys that how you big know, does that get also how big well, you can make them however big you want like but this, also dewalt this came one out is with 80 that. by 90 Go you can make them big you can make them small but i but i have two tables like that they're mm-hmm. fold out and they have these holes in them, and yeah. I can clamp anything down to them. DeWalt has them. Yeah, yeah, I've seen and those. And they've actually ones. changed my life. I 
grind on them. I can clamp my tile down on them. I can clamp my wood on them. Mm -hmm. I don't have to use a screw anymore to screw it into a piece right. of another plywood and put a hole in it. Hey, look how nicely our microphones are clamped in. I know. It's here. great. <laughs> but uh, but I am a little disappointed, Tony, that you, you didn't sand out all the, the pencil uh, marks here. It's still, it's I, seven rows left to do here. I oh, actually like that. Okay, so wait a second. Why. Wait that's a second. Why. I throw on, on Tony, like 20 minutes at it every now and then and <laughs> my shoulder hurts and I stop. So. You know what? I actually like the grid because now yeah. i can square something off on it and i can use it yeah. as you know a border it works pretty or, good i wanted to ask you uh, most people don't realize that fire code for the bottom of the door is five eights whenever i'm looking at a door i see a guy putting a, a door right on the ground it's like an either a 16th or an eighth and if there's a hump in the hardwood or the tile it's rubbing and grinding oh hang on a sec I, let, me, let me ask you a question though is that a fire code or is that a mechanical hvac it's fire code five eights it's so i don't understand so why there's an no backdraft an interior door because if there's a fire in a room it's under pressure and they open that door it blows open it's not Boom. a mechanical thing no it's got but, nothing to do but with it there. should be because you are right i know where you're leading to because in portugal they have <laughs> <laughs> no. They don't have doors. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Croatia, we have doors, and then we have... Just for the record, whenever you hear the word Portugal, or anything to do with Portuguese, it, there will be a joke to follow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only because of Manny. <laughs> so in Croatia, when you open your door on every bedroom, every washroom, there's a glass that can tilt in the top, and oh, that's yeah, so yeah. that there's circulation in the room. And they also leave like five-eighths to three-quarters under underneath the door croatians so, leading the construction car charge again amazing <laughs> they <laughs> so, have to have one thing so to thunk. <laughs> do you have a preference on height or do you always stick to i five like eights? a good three inches underneath the door so the puppy can under. walk right underneath <laughs> it's <a> right <laughs> play uh, uh five eights yeah yeah sure i'm really surprised that many people may know but they don't just kind of bring in some awareness to people i just want to yeah, hear yeah. what you no, normally do i think that's do. right i i've heard an inch under bathroom doors but i don't know if that's accurate for the most part like i'll do i think that inch for bathroom doors came from designers because oh, yeah? if it's a tight fitting bathroom and you've got a shower that's close to the door everyone puts a bath mat next to that and oh, all of a okay. sudden you can't huh. open up the door that makes sense oh i thought that was for a mirror to slide under <laughs> <laughs> I will never be using the bathroom at your hey, house. <laughs> hey, and for the joke earlier, the inside joke is, uh, is that the Lion King? <laughs> Can we get back on the train, please? <laughs> How do you feel about skylights? What's usually the, the wood that you recommend? You, do you like to see drywall, MDF, poplar? I don't know. Usually... It's not really his, his deal. That's yeah, a drywall. No, what do you think I about mean, finger I've, joints? I've never usually seen drywall going right up to it. Yeah. I've never uh, cased one. Well, I, I see water or done jam, a jam extension the in I'm, one. It's, I've only always seen uh, drywall in them. I've I'm never sure seen you, you do, do a skylight yet. What I'm leading to is I hate drywall around the skylights. Oh yeah, because I always see water damage like constantly. Like, if you're at least going to hang be, on a sec, if you're going to do drywall, I'm going to go back to it. it's a mechanical issue. If you're see, it depends on exactly. So this is building envelope if you've got a tunnel as a skylight you are going to get a difference regarding temperature from where the skylight is to where the actual ceiling height of that room is and that's where you're going to form condensation that water that you're seeing on the drywall is coming from the actual skylight glass yeah. surface itself which is produced by condensation so it's a mechanical it's got nothing to do with trim you have to use drywall well i've also seen guys put Boom. mdf Roasted. up there <laughs> no <laughs> i was gonna get to tony i i know you're a wood guy uh -huh. i'm a wood guy too i love wood as well but and, and i'm <laughs> I'm actually a fan of wood coffered ceilings. I don't like the prefab kind of units, setups, things that people have been yeah. doing. Listen, it's a custom, it goes custom. Are you a fan of all the new plaster foam backing? For if it's going to be paint grade, then absolutely. Yeah, sure. If it's going to be paint grade, it's, it takes work so away from much you. Though. More, it's so much more stable. It is. And if the quality product is what you want, then it makes sense to have them do it. It was me breaking my back to try and do it with MDF or Poplar, and it ends up cracking in a month, yep. and I have to come back and, you know, yep. it doesn't matter how you make it. It's if you end up having to come back and redo it just because insisting on doing it in MDF or Poplar, then it doesn't really make sense. It makes True. sense to have the other guys do it. If you're going to do stain grade, then obviously, That's a you different know, thing. Wood, wood guys got to what, do it. What's your preference in crown molding? MDF? poplar maple mdf if you Thank if you, you have to if you have to i would say mdf but for the most part i've seen a lot of the guys now are doing the plaster yeah and it's yeah, it just, 
It looks you're not good. touching it. You're not bumping it. There's I no don't, expansion. I don't think it, yeah, I don't think it looks worse than if you had done it with Poplar. Yeah, again, get those guys to do it. I just hate <sighs> wood around Crown. For every job I've done, I've always got a call back, and it's not because of my work. It doesn't matter how much glue you put, mm -hmm. how much nails you put, how much blocking you put back right, there. Yeah. You're dealing with two a surfaces of, that are different temperatures. What it does determine when you, you should use wood is when you get into an old plaster home, that's when you definitely shouldn't use well, wood. I, I've met yeah. a guy recently that he does that old school plaster stuff. Yeah. Solid yeah. plaster, Expensive. not foam. And it actually was cheaper than the foam plaster. Wow. I was surprised by it. I, yeah. you know, I haven't tried it yet. I haven't used it yet. I want to, but it makes sense. And, and I agree with you. If you are going to stain it, yeah, definitely build it up as wood and do the whole coffered ceiling that yeah. way. It's great. But if you're going to just paint create it, absolutely do the Go plaster, plaster go MDF, go that route. And that's a different story. It's okay. That's, I, I want to poke the bear again. <laughs> Oh, I like this. Go, go. Um, <laughs> toilet supply lines and dressing around it. Uh, I don't know. You don't like yeah. it. Carlito don't like it. Well, sometimes it's avoidable. You have to do the big square thing over. You can go under as well if it's just a flat. If you can and it's low enough, I prefer to just have a hole, have it come through the flat of the base. That would be my, my preference, but it's usually higher. Well, yeah, well, you what can, a lot of guys don't understand is that that placement of that supply line is dictated by the toilet manufactured is it yeah it's in the specs if but you doesn't mean we can't change it no, but they're recommending where it should be the same way they actually also if you read the instructions because this is interesting because i did it recently because I, I don't do really read instructions they'll <laughs> actually give you an, a window of where the toilet paper is supposed to be as well too yeah, yeah that should weird. be around 24 25 no, it's recommended by the <laughs> manufacturer i'm, I'm amazed it, that you actually know that number uh 24 25 come on no that's right <laughs> What are you new? <laughs> Actually, that's yeah, I have no typically idea. Typically, <laughs> where I put it, because I find that an average of people's legs but never get in yeah, the way. Yeah, okay, you're but like eight feet tall. So. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> different. Everybody's different. Plus, the toilets now are actually getting more compacted and being brought back into the wall. So, if you're placing it, then you're going to basically be you got a little shortcut. Yeah, of but you toilet. have a fire hose at home. You don't even use toilet paper. What? You got one of those bidets, don't you? No. Crickets. Uh, you, you strike me as a bidet kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're both European. We're both bidet guys. I'm a total bidet guy, but I don't he's have Japanese. one. He's Japanese. He's a bidet guy too, man. <laughs> Japanese have the coolest toilets, and they've had them forever. I know. I've seen them. And it's not even like a new thing. I grew Centuries up in, old. I grew up in Japan. Since I was a kid, they had those awesome toilets with the bidet, heated seats, everything even the little like water at the top so when you flush it it comes up and around you yep. see the water coming down yep. you could wash your hands there if you wanted to no but uh <laughs> Carlito, yeah what? like the warm seats they have the one for the guys and the girls it comes out further whatever it's they're pretty awesome and they've had them forever and then just like in the last few years you start seeing them on this side of the world it's like where have you been especially in canada who wants to sit on a cold toilet i know i, I love my heated seat. we should have heated I, seats uh, always i wrap mine with what <laughs> you wrap your own toilet seat yeah I what, wrap mine. what do you wrap it with <laughs> not, a, nice not little, at home not make at a home. nice little nest <laughs> anywhere else you can guarantee if i'm in the washer for 10 minutes five of its nesting <laughs> get fully undressed <laughs> <laughs> i mean you gotta be comfortable right can we back <laughs> get back on wood <laughs> <laughs> okay so here's a question and you can do a plug to anyone you want me and manny will allow you to do that one i oh. want you to build a plug where do you find your favorite purchase of baseboards casings and doors you know what i usually am not supplying it the contractor is so another question <laughs> <laughs> wow he's really diplomatic no, I, I mean just as long when, as it's on site and i can have access to it yeah i have i have noticed at least locally most of the trim stuff really like brenlo's quality i like how they package it i like how they store it in their shop it's not all standing up and turning into bananas their stuff's usually pretty good locally there's century mill so for hardwoods custom things nice quality sheet goods i get most of that stuff for custom stuff i always get from uh, century mill there which is 10 minutes down the road for me family business super nice guys if i had to plug anyone then century mill for there sure you go. and awesome. they actually are a good a they're good shop. so cool they're really cheapest epay i think in the gta you still using the vest I am every single day. I can't do pouches, and I've tried some really nice ones. The vest gets used every day. I agree with you, man. The vest makes more sense than a pouch. Actually, to clarify, the vest is, in my opinion, the best for trim work, but I've used it for siding or framing, and it's not great. Yeah. So, because if you have to hang a framing nailer on, on the vest on one of the pockets, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't work. No, but running around doing trim, like up and down stairs, kneeling, I've found the best. So, the we're, vest ta is, we're talking about the, the Snickers, the, the Snickers yeah. tool vest. And I agree with you. It's not for framing. 
No. Nah. But I see that tile setters, they like it too. That's right. And I, I've seen I passed my old one on to him. And he there. loved it, right? So it was <laughs> he it still was uses nice. It. And then <laughs> I've I've also seen uh plumbers because they put all their fittings, all their uh PEX fittings. I don't think I've ever seen a plumber wearing any sort of tool belt vest thing dealio it's at true. all. Ever. Unfortunately it's for, true. <laughs> for yeah. me when it comes to with trim, I'd rather have a rolling tray. I got one of those I got one of those. I got as well. those Princess Auto trays. It's got three levels. Yeah. And I just like have one le- level of sandpaper and glue. The next one's like the major tools that I'm using. And yeah. then the stuff that I don't typically use but I'm gonna use underneath. Right. I don't want to have anything in my pockets either. Manny passed me one of his old Stanley vests and I also found that I only like to do it when I'm doing trim. Like yeah. because I like painting. So if I'm like Talking, filling, you know, I got my scraper in there, a piece of sandpaper don't in bring, there. Don't bring up painting. He doesn't <laughs> like painting. I know, but I do. <laughs> then you can paint my kitchen. <laughs> no problem. Build me a table. I, I, I think Carlito has we'll lost do a, a trade. Little, <laughs> Carlito lost a little respect for Tony there because Tony no. doesn't like painting. Carlito. No, not at all. Carlito. Actually, I, and this is something we should talk about. I actually have more respect for him that he doesn't want to do painting. He focuses. <laughs> he's just he, not good at it. He focuses it. on what he's strong at, and then he allows me to have work. I can do my job that I enjoy. Tony, say something bad about plastering and mudding, and then just really fucking take him over the edge. <laughs> No, let's talk more about wood because you know what, dude? Honestly, yeah. you are, out of all the guys that I've met yeah. in construction over 30 years, you You're are- You're in the front. You're in the you front. Are you are my it, it. favorite for record. <laughs> That's my yeah. opinion. I would send you anywhere, refer you to anyone. Thank you, I, sir. I want to talk about the little <laughs> tools. Like For me, you're really impressive. Most guys will take a two-part epoxy, and if they're going down the staircase, they'll just spray it maybe sometimes. They'll just nail it. Literally, you will put dowels and biscuit joints, it and depends, you'll right? use bulldog grip bites, and you'll uh, pinch dogs. Yeah, the, sorry, the pinch dogs. Um, <laughs> you'll, That's arr, a arr, thing. You'll, arr, arr. you'll clamp, and <laughs> you're not longer at it. It's the same amount of time. If anything, huh. it's less because. By the time the hack puts it on and just mm-hmm. nails it to the wall or it falls apart, <laughs> I'm spending more time as a painter filling and fixing right. instead of the one minute or 30 seconds you took to like do the job probably. So why don't you talk about a couple of tools you use? Because you know what? That was the most impressive part. Your jigs and your tools. Jigs. I guess jigs for... I really like having jigs. Or I'll just... I'd rather... If I have to do something more than once... I'll usually make a jig. Like if I have to, even if, or even if I have to just do it once, if I have to do a mortise for a lock, I'll make a jig for it. To talk about glue again, like there's a different one, good glues for everything. Like if you're just putting together a Like quick liquid jig. nails? Oh my God. Do you God. ever use liquid nails? <laughs> what, like uh, PL? <laughs> no, it's not liquid nails. It's called no more nails. Oh. You ever seen no. that crap? Yeah, I've, I never used it, but. I uh, use it all the time. He hates it. <laughs> Why the hell do you use that all the time? There's places that, okay, no. so. Oh, there is no place. No, it belongs to the DI world no, planet. There, there's <laughs> places where I don't like PL that I can't nail to. The PL sp- expands. It bubbles. It foams. Where the where give me a place where you can't nail something to or fasten it with a, an actual mechanical. I do. A, I do a lot of commercial work, so I, I end up being up against a lot of concrete walls or drywall up against concrete walls, and there's nowhere to nail to. So I have tap to tap con into the concrete. Mm. Why would I want to put a tap con on a baseboard to fasten it? That's just a waste of time. <laughs> Liquid nails. <laughs> I just never, uh, sorry. Back to you, Tony. Sometimes we get on a rant with each other. <laughs> different glues for different things. So for quick jig making, I like using just the two part ones, like a spray, a miter bond, or something like that. Or two feet ten. For other it people, is. that's. For then, yeah, I wouldn't use that for in a, a casing or baseboard because it's it's rigid. If you if you kick it, it'll crack. It's so handy for little jig making, for casing and miters. I use the hyper, like baseboard joints going around like inside and outside miters. And I'll just use regular yellow wood glue type bond or whatever. And then peel on the back, whatever. So you end up using everything. Whatever works. You nice don't rely on uh, two-part spray to hold it. You ju- it's no, just no, there I, temporary. I use it, I use it for building jigs yeah it's just it's the I've seen fastest guys you don't want to that. spend all day making a jig to do something that you're going to finish in five minutes the point is that you're making the jig to make the job go faster so what's your favorite tool that's made your life the most efficient out of, mm, in trim probably my little block plane I've, i use it all the time wow that to you know hand tools right <laughs> 
You're, yeah, because you're, no, I use it all the time. Because you're like, a real finished you know, carpenter. Well, you try you know, like trimming down a door. You want to get a reveal just right. Sometimes it, it works out to just take a tiny bit off the top or whatever. You can, I mean, it's not ideal. You can use it on MDF. You can use it on solid doors. You use it a little bit on baseboard. If you're scribing the bottom, you don't want to walk around with a, a big sander all the time. Sometimes it's just nice using that little thing. Where'd you find that one again? That's the guy that's in the States. That one that is uh, Lee Nielsen. Just a little bronze. And then you also have your clamps. Block oh, clamp. yeah, dude. I love your, your miter corner, clamps. Your miter clamps. Oh. What are they called again? They're, uh, Clam clamps. Clam clamps. They're called there you go. time clamps? Clam. Yes. No. Clam clamps. <laughs> time clamps. <laughs> yeah, it clam saved clamps. me time. <laughs> they do. They do. Okay, save so we're, time, we're so. getting too close to the end here, Carlito. And Carlito normally has about 15,000 questions towards the end. Typically, we ask those kind of questions at the end. We kind of ask them at the beginning. No, we didn't ask them at the beginning. We asked partially at the beginning. So I, mean, I guess what kind of advice would you give? Let's say somebody else just like you, like they're actually making a career change. I mean, this is a little surprising that you, you made a dramatic career change into construction. You didn't go to school. You weren't an apprentice. Right. You didn't go to the union. <laughs> you just uh, mm -hmm. solved problems and you actually gravitated toward it. And now all of a sudden you have a passion for it. And there's a lot of guys out there like that. But I'm sure that they probably are discouraged and maybe they're yelled at a little harder or maybe they're not making their money or maybe they're just being pushed away from it. Our problem is that we're hearing that a lot of the younger guys are not wanting to get into the industry. Oh, yeah. Because they think that you can't make a living from it like a decent living compared to all their it friends that are designing the next app that is going to be completely useless but somehow they bought investors into it hmm. and they became six-figure boys or seven-figure boys and girls what can we tell the younger generation <laughs> that does sound pretty good uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i don't no, know but they got you, a world of other problems you have, man you have to like it that's the only reason why i'm still doing it i really like it forcing yourself to get into something just because you feel like you need to that's obviously not going to work out you have to really like it and the only reason why i feel like i've been remotely successful if i even am at this trade is like i really love doing it i like doing the furniture for myself i like doing little side jobs i like that it's always different it's you know do custom stuff doors here and there little built-ins and then on-site trim so a little bit of everything for me i just i really like it it's fun i get to basically that's why i like the woodworking and trim work the most is because you get to see the finished product i was never really into the more rough side of the carpentry i can do a bit of framing here and there but i like doing the finished stuff because you see what you did you see the finished product and it's you can take your time a lot of times and make sure it's perfect and it feels good it looks good and if you take the time to do it right, then people are happy and you get the satisfaction from that as well. So. You're a bit of a rare breed because I think every other trim guy I know drives a van. Ooh. Ooh. How do you feel about <laughs> vans versus pickup trucks? But I mean, I think you have a pickup truck up here because you're up here in the wilderness. Exactly. But so, there, there but is you a 4x4 four 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 van. Four van. I have a 4x4 four if... four van. Oh yeah? Yeah. Which one? Chevy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Express like 3500. Older... What's uh... Give me one of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, if like so I would totally get a van if I could get a four by four and right now the Mercedes is like it's too expensive. It's out of my price range to get a new Mercedes four by four van. I think and then no one ever you know sells what, that, just if so they, you know, no one sells used ones. Yes, so. yes they do. Oh yes they do. Yes they do. Yeah, well it's rare. hard to find you a, can a get, four by four used one. Yeah, you can that's get the thing. It you can get a second hand one close to mine. Uh, mine's a very rare unicorn. Exactly. But, but you can get... Unicorn. You're but driving you get, your wife's van. You liar. <laughs> uh, so I got a, I got an extended 3500 yeah. 4 by 4 You know, you could buy them for about $30,000, $35,000 secondhand. This isn't the Carlito van podcast. Yeah, but the thing is, like... <laughs> I no, but would, I'm just if saying I was going to get a van, I'd want the, like, the taller style Euro yeah. van, like a, a, so you a Transit or a, or a Mercedes or something where I could do all my shelving in it and all that. Oh, so but you, are, you are interested in I a would, van. I would. I totally would. If if I'm doing work up around here, then the trailer is awesome because hooked up to my truck, uh, it's four by four. I never have a problem getting out of the driveway. As you notice, coming down the driveway is pretty long. I have to have four by four. And until like I can get an affordable four by four that I can build out, I'll just do the truck trailer. I want to I want to poke the bear again on one mm. last thing. I have something too. Okay. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Tesla pickup truck? Good for him for 
Trying, I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly Wait not crapping can... on it. I'm I... honestly not. Like, at least he's coming up with stuff. I think it looks hideous, but he'll he'll work it out. He'll come up with something. Do you think cool. it's a? You, do you think it's a fair truck for the construction industry? No, probably not from the get go. Maybe it's probably you never buy the first of anything that comes out. Let them work it out. They'll come up with an awesome truck. I'm sure. Like the guy's a genius. I, I respect will. him for that, for all the ideas. I, but, to but, me, it, it looks like something that you would get in a matchbox. I don't like it. I think it's ugly. Good for him. The man will come up with something awesome that'll end up. Being, ideas are what drives the future. Yeah. Well, I, totally. I don't. First of all, I don't like electric. I like the theory of electricity. I don't like what it does to us being in the car. Like, what? there's no way to protect our organs. You're in a and magnetic our body. field. Uh-oh, I'm not. Here we I'm go. not I know, I'm not I know, into I that. I'm not going to um, get into the EMF world. <laughs> I do not want to get into. Are EMF they also world. seeding the clouds above us right I, now? <laughs> that's <laughs> no. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> Okay, you had a few more questions. We got to wrap it up. Okay, Tony's so, a busy guy. I need to pee because this whiskey look at went that. right He's through me. Let me tell you. So one of, wrap qu- it up. one of my questions is: You obviously work for yourself. Is it because you don't want to work for someone else? You don't like someone else's vision? Why did you choose to work for yourself? Flexibility is really nice. I'm always the first one on site. I don't mind staying late. I just like knowing that if I do want to go, I can go. I don't have to ask anyone. Just that little bit of flexibility is really nice, and I can do a little bit of everything. I'm not stuck in just doing one thing and then also i'm tired of doing drywall repairs and random little bits and things like that (laughs) (laughs) here's the big one you have everything and you have reinvented everything (laughs) and you have so many cool little gadgets and tools i just want to like spend a month here duplicating them for myself welcome what does Tony want for his next tool, 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 tool? <laughs> what will Santa, 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 Santa? What will Santa? Tony buy next, next, next? Mm. <laughs> Let's what, see. what is on the grocery list? Yeah, there? like when a guy has everything and you're so precise and meticulous, what do you want? I want to know basically, what Tony wants. Basically, at this point, it's only what I want. I have everything I need. I would like a nice, uh, what do you call them? I wouldn't mind some some good hand tools, you know? Like just chisels? To, and No, I've got decent chisels. Like I've got decent drills planes. and stuff, you mean? No, like mainly just for my furniture things. Some better draw knives, things like that. Not even things that I need. Those are wants. They're basically just wants. <laughs> things that I can decorate and adorn my shop with. Okay. And, and, the, and the last thing, and it doesn't have to be about trim work. What is your favorite wood? Oh, great Ooh. question. As he looks around at his live edges and his different <laughs> types of wood that are uh, piled, that are very organized and do you, have a, do, you have a, do you have a piece of African mahogany or that there's that other one from Africa? Uh, sa- there's sa- uh, what's sapele? it called? Sapele, that's it. He's I got it here. I can't I believe this. Got some cherry up there. Got a, uh, what is that? Uh, oh, some live edge Paduk. behind me. That, oh no, that's flame maple there. Anything mm. exotic? No, but what is your favorite work? Wood to wood. work with, or just wood in general? Just Tony's uh, opinion. You know what? I really like white oak. I really? like. You know what? I like red oak as well. I think red oak is one of the the things that it got used so much in every floor in every single house for like fifty years. So now people are just so put off by red oak. But I really like working with oak because it's so strong. It's strong, durable. It's it's, it's generally like once you joint it, it stays nice and straight. There's certain woods that always they it's just the, it's want the grain. to curve. It's, I think I think most people are sick of the grain. Yeah, well, because there's the different cuts. You get quarter sawn and it's nice and straight. If you get the flat sawn, then it's got that kind of uglier, wavy kind of look that I think people are just sick and tired of seeing. But that's the one everywhere. that I actually like it. Yeah. <laughs> I like that grain better. I mean, it's very bold. My favorite wood, I don't know. Again, it's like asking maybe an, an artist what is his favorite uh, <laughs> There was, favorite but color. I know it's going to get cut out. <laughs> <laughs> Where does Tony see his business going in the next five years? The next five years, I want to start getting... Right now, I do... I sub in a lot for different companies or i'd like to start getting some more of my own jobs probably in the next five years take on at least one guy learn how to do that that's going to be a big one for me having a an employee you should give john from craft and clerk a call and captain he, clerk cl- is that? Craft. <laughs> captain kirk <laughs> no <laughs> beat me up scotty <laughs> john no no give craft. captain we've got problems in the engine room <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's too early to drink, man. You should never drink before a podcast. <laughs> I'm Croatian. Slivovitska every there morning. There we go. No, cra- craft and clerk. So yeah. they, they help with all that paperwork. Nightmare. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. We did a podcast with them on it, but we no know ice. you're not listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always listen. I can't wait to hear. What okay, one, say. one last question. Wrap it up. Wrap one it up. Last wrap it up. The I, final I really do need question. It's got a P. <laughs> wrap final it up. question, John. <laughs> <laughs> when, when does Sean Connery come on? Man, what the fuck? <laughs> There's dragon eggs or just brewing outside. <laughs> <laughs> What's the question? What is Tony's favorite pencil? A Stadler Five H. Ooh, what is that? That's just a hard old harder school lead. drafting table or drafting yeah, the pencil. Yeah, Stalers, Stalers, <laughs> drafting <laughs> st- pencil. <laughs> Stalers five really, H, eh? five H, and four H because they have the hardest lead. They don't break as easily. They stay sharp longer. They're not as dark, but for trim, they're nice and crisp. Or then I also use mechanical pencils. Uh, no Picas. Yeah. No, I've never tried them. I've right. I've heard about them, but I'm I, in I love know. with the Pika myself. Oh, yeah. but. I've heard some great things about them. I've just never tried them. I just wanted to know because I know you're a Finnish carpenter and you don't want big thick lines because then you're not accurate. Yeah, that's so why I, you get the the five H four H five H. Just wanted to pick your brain on that. Can I have one more question? <sighs> that's up to Tony and his peeing situation. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm about okay. to go pee. This, this will be month. real fast. <laughs> so typically, I always tell people sixteen gauge nail on the bottom of baseboard, eighteen on the top. What do you think of that? Yeah, that sounds good. Is that typically what yeah. you do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tony. Dum, on dum, that note, we got all the gauges. We got everything. We figured out all of it. Thank you, you so out much. What my favorite door is exactly <laughs> all that stuff, right? Because we had to ask it four times. Uh, any other? No, we don't. No, we, that's it. That's okay. it. Thank you so much, Tony. This has been fun doing the podcast in your workshop up here in Stouffville. Rejoice. Oh, are we in Stouffville or White Church? Where are we? Whitchurch, Stouffville. Yeah. Whitchurch, Stouffville. So north of Toronto, we could actually see the scene tower from here yep which we actually did see the same tower from here I, we, I can't believe that I, that's it make it he's got to go beat us out of here man i was beep hoping bot, he was gonna beep, play beep, his beep, bass beep, out of here beep, beep, so beep, i'm gonna try beep, i'm gonna try beep, something beep, different beep. thanks tony so much man thank you very much Get us out of here. 416, baby. T-O. 905. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm still representing the 416. Yeah. T.O. <laughs>